Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed doing your little uh, little field test and you've uh, uploaded a cool video of your 3D model or character um, and I look forward to having a look really in the, in the comment section. Now, one of the things to make your life a little bit easier is to kind of give you uh, Vuphoria a little bit of extra lighting. Now, a lot of the time, when Vuphoria is throwing the error saying it can't find the image due to being low detail, it's actually down to lighting. A lot of the time when you hold your phone over a surface, you're actually casting a shadow depending where the light is. So one of the little hacks that I've found is to add a button for the flash. Now, what we're actually going to do is add a button but use it like a torch where we can turn the flash on and off. Um, at our own discretion. So sometimes when I'm demonstrating an AR app to somebody, I put the torch on, I activate the, uh, the AR experience, and then as I come back, I disable the torch. So let's have a look now because attached to this video, I uploaded a small graphic of uh, Flash. So make sure you download the Flash asset and import that into Unity. Now, when you import an asset into Unity, it appears on the, on, in the asset panel down at the bottom, but it knows it's some kind of graphic, but doesn't by default know exactly what to do with it. So sometimes it sets it as a texture where what we want to do is actually use an image for a button, and that needs to be something called a sprite. So I need you to come up to this bar here and change the type of image to sprite 2D. That way, Unity will know exactly what to do uh, with, the, with the graphic that's been imported. Now, if you come down to the bottom, you can see that the size of this is 512 by 512. So when uh, Unity exports this, it's make, it makes sense to make the maximum size 512, as this is going to save on memory when, uh, when the app's exported. So, now watch what happens when I click apply, I've changed it to a Sprite 2D. So watch here, there we go, look. So now Unity knows exactly what type of graphic this is and it's no longer trying to render it as a texture. Now the quickest way of getting a flash button in is let's copy the refresh button. If I right click and uh, duplicate, sorry, and then I'm going to click and change the name to be flash there we go, ah, I'll do it with a, a capital. And then I'm going to position the button to the right. Now, if I want, I can change the sprite here so that the graphic no longer uses this button uh, as a background and just puts the flash icon. The problem with that is when you're in uh, the AR experience look, sometimes it may be difficult to actually see the button. So I'm going to leave the button as uh, the user defined target camera button and then what I'm going to do is delete this text so here we go and then if I click on the flash button again right click and then come down I want to add an image now what that will do is it will add an image if I just scroll in you can see it's added an additional image as a child of the button but our image actually has a transparent background. So when I swap the source to the flash, it looks fine. I might actually scale it uh, slightly. So this image is a little bit distorted. Let's kind of make it more circular and then click on the image inside. And I'm just going to scale it down slightly. It still looks a little bit distorted, so if I click on the graphic itself, let's make the width and the height the same. So let's just give it 140 by 140. There we go, so at least we know now it's in proportion. And the image inside, I'm just going to make slightly bigger now. It's, it's just cosmetics. I'll let you guys decide exactly how and where you want to position it. Oh, wrong one, this one. So I'm going to have my button here so it can kind of be tucked in the corner. So the next time I run, uh, run the app, I'm just going to press this button. It will then activate the flash as a torch and then make my life easier when I'm trying to detect a target. So let's make that happen. If we come back to the button, which is the camera button, which I'm now going to rename as well, we already have a script attached. 
So I'm rather than making an additional script for the flash, I'm just going to add it to the existing uh, fixed panel script that we already have. So if I double click, I'm going to add a new function now, which will uh, be called toggle flash. And then when we press that button, I want to call that function and activate and deactivate the flash. So if I want to uh, access it from the scene, it needs to be public. It doesn't return any information, so it will be a void. And I'm just going to call it toggle flash. There we go. So the first thing that I want to do is know if the flash is on or not already. So up at the top, if I add an extra variable, which I'm going to call on off and set that to be false. Oh, there we go. That means that when this application runs, I have a private variable which I've called on and off and at the moment it's set to off. So whatever on off is, I'll now know what to do with the toggle. So the first thing we need to do is make a condition to check if the flash is on or off. Now to make things a little bit easier for you guys, I'm going to come up to the preferences and I'm just going to increase the font size uh, slightly. There we go. In fact, maybe a little bit more on the fonts. We'll go to 16. There we go. So hopefully you guys can see this a little bit clearer now. So here's toggle flash. Now I'm going to write the condition to check if the flash is on or not. And if it's off, turn it on. And if it's on, turn it off. And the way we do that is with a condition. So if, and inside here, I'm going to write a condition so if whatever is true or false, do this. Otherwise, do this. Nice and easy. So if on off is the same as false, meaning there's no flash, what I want you to do is turn the flash on. So that is in camera device dot instance dot set flash torch mode. And if you look across to the right, I basically turn it on or off with a Boolean, which is true or false. So set the flash torch mode. And we're going to set the flash to be on. There we go. So when I call toggle flash from touching the button, it's going to get my variable. And if it's set to false, turn it on. So now we need to set my variable to be true. There we go. And basically, we need to do the reverse here. So if the uh, camera device dot instance set flash torch mode to be false, and then update my variable to be false, which I can't spell today for some reason. There we go. So nice and easy. Toggle flash. Up at the top, we have a private Boolean, which I currently have set to false. And then every time I call this function, it finds out what the current state is. And if it's false, turn it on and set it to be on. And then the next time I come in, it will be on already. So it will run this section instead. And it will turn it off and set it to off as false. So nice and easy. Now all we have to do is save the file, come back to Unity, click on the button, make sure you're on the flash and not on the image inside. Otherwise, when the person is touching, because it's transparent, unless they actually hit the lightning, then the button won't work. So make sure you're on the actual out, outline of the button. Come down to the on click and it already has the camera button uh, because we duplicated the refresh. But this time, instead of calling the refresh function, we're going to call toggle flash save the file and that's it nice and simple now this won't work in the editor you have to file and build and run it again with the usb uh, wire connected to the phone to actually see it work because you don't really have a flash on uh, on a, la a laptop or a desktop unless you have something uh, pretty fancy so give it a build and make sure that it's working okay and if you've hit any snags then just drop me a message in the uh, in the comment section and that's it for this video and uh, we'll pick up in the next one.